Okay, hi everyone out there in Facebook land. Uh, we are live. This is WTF uh, Window Treatment Live or Window Treatment Friday Live. And today's topic is uh, how to treat your doors. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kim. I work at Window Works. We are located in Livingston, New Jersey. We service the New Jersey, New York, and tri-state area. We are a retail showroom and we are also open um, to trade accounts as well. And I will introduce myself as well. Uh, my name is Bita. I am the owner of Vitalia Inc. Window Treatments and Awnings. And we service the design trade in the Philadelphia area with window treatments, awnings, as well as related products like bedding, cushions, upholstery, and um, everything in between. All right. So. And so. Uh, this is actually, believe it or not, this is our episode number eight. Yes. So this has been two months of uh, WTF Lives here with Kim on Facebook mostly. Wow. And we're going to be recently on Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. Hopefully Instagram won't be too buggy today and we can right. um, actually hold through the entire thing. <laughs> but what I wanted to share with you is a great shout out that we received from um, Dawn Rousseau of yes, expressive God. interiors and she emailed me directly after last week's episode and she said just wanted to say how much I enjoy your weekly WTF with Kim and I especially enjoyed this past Friday when you spoke about two-story window <laughs> treatments and so thank you thank you Dawn we really thank appreciate you, Dawn. it that was really exciting to see that email when you sent that Vita to see uh that you guys are enjoying these videos. We are doing them for you. And if you have questions or anything, please do not hesitate to reach out to us on any platforms, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, you can email us, you know, we're here to help. And if you are joining us live, by all means, type in the question into the chat box, whether Instagram or Facebook, and we'll be happy to, to address it. But if you're watching a replay, like you said, um, don't hesitate to, um, to reach out, just like Dawn did, as a matter of fact. Yes. You know, she, she, yes. she, she gave me that wonderful um, shout out and she said, oh, and by the way, I have a quick question about the two-story window treatments and I was happy to help her and support her in any way that I could. Yeah. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, let's get started with doors. Okay, how do you treat them? What do you do with them? How do you cover mm -hmm. them? How do you make sure that they still operate, but at the same time, you want to add some texture and color and all the wonderful things that window treatments provide? Well, so here's exactly. one of the examples. We have a bank of three doors, and um, this was a, a, a project in the Philadelphia area, actually in Jenkintown beautiful beautiful house off of meeting house road for anybody who knows and uh this was the family room and the windows were facing the street and so it was important that we were able to mm -hmm. cover them and give them the functionality so what we did we gave them these functional drapery panels you see them stuck back to the side but they do function and they're actually mounted on three individual traverse rods these particular oh. ones are from United Supply, uh, which is one of the hardware companies that we use. These are flat fascia traverse rods, and we did cover hardware a few episodes ago. So if you guys missed those, make sure to check it out. And um, there's a track inside the rod with a square fascia. So this was a very modern interior, and we wanted to keep the hardware modern. Mm -hmm. The reason that we had to put it on three different tracks, even though it's made look like one continuous mm -hmm. track, the truth of the matter is actually three individual ones, mm -hmm. is because we needed to operate three doors individually. Mm -hmm. And so hence three different tracks. So there you have it. Very good. And those drapes operate via baton, correct? How were they operating? Do, 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 do. I, I think actually this was cord. Okay. Um, either it could have been done either way. In this particular situation, the customer opted out for a cord. Okay. So the left window, the cord is on the left. The mm -hmm. middle wi the window, I should say, door, the, the cord is, um, I think, on the left as well. And it's sort of like tucked between the drapes there. And the right door, the cord is on the right. Very nice. Okay. So this was a project here local to us uh, in a townhome community. And what you see here is the uh, door or the picture on the left 
um, this family room area has two sliding glass doors that go out to a terrace. And so you have a door on the left, that kind of bank of windows there in the middle in that bay area, and then you have a door on the right. So with the door on the right, as you can see, there isn't a lot of wall space, so we couldn't do center open panels there. And the client really wanted to have some kind of drape and some kind of feel because this was the great room when you walked into the townhouse, and this was really like the backdrop of the whole space. Mm -hmm. So we decided to just do a one-way panel. And because those two doors were on either side of that bank of windows, it almost felt like it was a pair of drapes mm -hmm. framing out that um, that area. So that was the tricky part because we only had like three inches to the right of that door and you didn't have a lot of fa a lot of wall space to the left of the door either. Now the picture on the left, I had plenty of wall. So that was, you had, we could have done a pair there, but we thought it would look a little silly and to give it symmetry. So. With that, and these were baton draws, so we, the client is able to stack the panels on the side of the sliding glass door that is stationary, and this way they can go in and out freely. And then it was a question of what to do with the windows in the middle, and so we opted for woven woods, and we wanted to have, um, we put the woven woods at the same height as the drapery rod, so all the window treatments were connected, and it connected the two doors you know, the, the right door and the left door together. So don't be afraid of feeling like, oh, you know, you assume that you need to have a pair of uh, window treatments on a sliding glass door. If you don't have room, um, you can just have it where it's just a one-way panel. Sometimes we have to, you know, I always say to my clients, we have to forego the the pretty over function, especially if, you know, and even if that door on the left wasn't there, you could still just have the one panel and it would still look appropriate and lovely. And it's so interesting, Kim, when I got these pictures from you, mm -hmm. Um, it, it took me like, like a second to realize mm -hmm. that the left yeah. picture is the left door and the right picture yeah. is the right door. But I have to tell you, like, like to your mm -hmm. point, even if the left door didn't exist, right. we actually did a very similar project here in Doylestown in Bucks County, where we are, where there was a master bedroom with a mm -hmm. bay window. We did draperies there um, just because it was master and whatnot. And, but it only had the right door. And so right. we did the right um, stacking panel that moved to the left to close and to to the right to open yeah so nicely done thank you okay so arch <laughs> okay what we have here next is not only is it a door <laughs> but of course it had to be an arch door <laughs> exactly you know, this one problem is it enough you have to add two you know you have to get mm -hmm. you gotta have another thing Just double so, whammy there uh so yeah. here's what we did here Okay, so believe it or not, this is a master bathroom. Oh, I mean, how, how cool is this, right? How that cool is, is this? Pretty place? cool. I know, that's really cool. This was for a, you know what? I should have mentioned the designer in the previous picture. Um, that mm -hmm. was done for a wonderful design design firm um, out of New Hope that I do a lot of window treatments for. They are called um, a Gasic Design Group, led by a wonderful lead designer, principal designer, Richard Gasic, and he has a whole team. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Richard and the team for allowing me the opportunity to do that for you. And this particular is a uh, project was done for another designer here in the Philadelphia area out of Chestnut Hill. Her name is Beth Robertson from B. Robertson Interiors. So, okay. So uh, what we did here was stationary panels. What you're seeing, these mm -hmm. panels are not movable. They're not functional. They're only meant there to stay and look pretty. The function comes from the Roman shades that right. we put on the doors. So what I wanted to highlight here is that it's okay to have two different treatments on the same uh, window or door opening, if you will. Right. <laughs> glass opening. <laughs> so, um, so the Roman shade goes up and down on the door so they can raise it up, look outside at night, they can bring it down, they mm -hmm. can take their showers and do their good thing. So um, interesting thing here it has nothing to do specifically um, with, well, no, actually it does. When you install Roman shades, any kind mm -hmm. of outside mount installation and on the door, on the French door, you have to have mm -hmm. an outside mount. Just remember that the board of the Roman shade yep. will protrude into the window and there will be a gap between the Roman shade hanging on the glass mm -hmm. and the actual 
class itself. Now, how big is that gap has to do with the projection of the board. How big is the projection of the board? That has to do with the mechanism that you put on the board. If it's just something very simple, like a cord lock, it can be as small as one inch. But if you wanted mm -hmm. to have something a little bit fancier, like a cord lock, not cord lock, a... Um, Clutch. A, a clutch, a Rolly's yeah. clutch. Yeah, then it just, it's it's bigger, it's thicker, and it protrudes uh, more. So you have to have a thicker board. So which is what yeah. this was. We actually ran into a similar situation like that out in the Hamptons for uh, a designer for Jody Mackwright. And we were doing woven woods, which are very similar to um, a Roman shade. And with this, particular with these particular French doors they were right um they accessed right to from her bedroom to the patio mm -hmm. where everyone would be hanging out so we actually tested it and we you know took a piece of paper and saw like okay if it projects out about two inches off oh. of the glass you can see like where can you see in from the angle and she didn't want that she didn't want it was like you know she had guests over and so what we ended up doing there was we did a reverse hang so we had the fabric go off the um, back of the board. Mm -hmm. And oh, then that's we a had, really good idea. Yes. Yeah, so that's another way to kind of get around that gap situation because it all depends on what's happening on the other side of the door. If it's going to a private terrace, then it is what it is. But if it's going into like a communal space and you don't want people seeing in with that angle, especially um, in bathrooms and whatnot, you could always do a reverse hang. You will have to have a little valance in front, yep. but that's okay. But again, that's that's when you sometimes have to forgo the um, pretty for function. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so this was a project um, also out in the Hamptons. Um, I feel like it's summertime, so it's it's only appropriate. <laughs> yeah, you guys was, do a lot of projects up in the Hamptons. We, just we before do. we got on the, on the line, you're we like, oh, do. this project that we did. We, yeah, so uh, we love the Hamptons. Um, so this project was uh, for a master bedroom that looked out into uh, a terrace, and um, it was double sliding glass doors. So there was a couple of things there because it was the master bedroom, it needed to be blackout. So that's the reason for the cornice. So cornice helps with the blackout. Um, we also had to notch because of the um, there was uh, crown molding. So in order to lift it up, there wasn't that much space between the top of the door. Because a lot of times you're going to find that too, with doors being so high and tall, depending on the doors, you don't really have a lot of space from like where the ceiling line comes down or the crown comes down. So what we were fortunate in this situation was the house was being um, was being renovated. So we asked the contractor not to carry the crown throughout ah. uh, the top of the door. So That's sometimes, awesome. it, so we had them cut back the crown so we could bring the cornice up and mm -hmm. then really have the drapery go up because or else the, the drapery would have, um, the cornice would have impacted the door. So that's another thing too, when you're working on sliding glass doors or French doors uh, and there isn't a lot of space, you always want to ask, how tall is the tallest person who lives here? <laughs> because... And then you measure yep. it. I've, I've actually measured clients to see, okay, you're the X amount of height. And my, so the bottom of my cornice has to be here. So you don't feel like you don't, don't want the homeowner or, or the client to potentially hit their face on the valance. So that was the only way that we were able to get around that was to ask the contractor to cut back the crown so that this way the crown just died into the side of the, um, of the cornice. And we were able to bring the height up. Hi, Gina. Gina's a... Uh, with us here on Facebook. Um, so that was our, you know, our solution to that problem. And sometimes too, even if the house isn't in renovation, there is, there are ways that a contractor handyman is able to kind of cut that crown back in order for you to bring height, because you could almost see where the top of the, um, of the molding is here. If there wasn't a lot of space. So, mm -hmm. and if the blackout was key in this mm -hmm. situation where we, and if you were to just do a a drapery rod, a track like in Vita's in the first slide that we had, light is going to bleed through that all day long. Right. So this was this is a solution to that. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're doing top treatments over a door that you need to have enough clearance and space so that people could get through. And I can offer an additional tip. If you are ever in a situation where all the requirements are the same as Kim's, and, but however, you don't have the, um, the the luxury of it being under mm -hmm. construction, <laughs> or maybe you don't have the luxury of having a handyman who can who can cut back yeah. the the entire piece of crown molding. 
what we have done is we've actually scribed the back of the return of the cornet. Yep. And so, um, so we would we would get the shape of the yeah. building and then replicate that shape on the back of the return of the mm -hmm. cornice so that we can still do the same install all the way to the ceiling but essentially the cornice literally hugs yeah. <laughs> the, the crown but the rest of the crown runs underneath it yeah we've, we've had to do that too where we've had to do a cutout at the back so it looks a little funky when you're putting it up but it, it literally hugs Exit. So these are just some key tricks and things to keep in mind when dressing doors, when putting balances over doors. There's some awesome um, tips and tricks that we're giving here. Even, you know, yes. do doors or not, um, you know, how yeah, do you get around the building, right? <laughs> it's, it's things to consider. Okay, so this project was a really, was one of Luann's projects for us, Suzanne Laurie Architects out in Long Island. And this home um, is right on the water in Long Island. So this is a master bedroom. And this, in this particular corner, it was a sitting, uh, the sitting room area of the master bedroom. So as you can see, they have amazing views. But with that, you also have, you know, other neighbors and people going in on their boats and they can see into the space. So it, and these are all doors. They're, the, the transom windows are fixed at the top, but these doors all go out to the terrace and the client wanted to um, wanted to have the option and luckily the door swung out, not in. <laughs> so, um, and because of the double crown situation that we had going on there, it was a question of where can we put the crown? So that's another thing too to keep in mind since these are operable drapes, we had to find um, hardware uh, that could clear the crown and the crown of the door because the crown of the door was very decorative. Mm -hmm. And the client also didn't want um, track they wanted a rod with rings <laughs> so it was there was a couple of things that we had to like that we had to figure out so it was finding a rod that was um, sturdy enough that, that we could still open and close with um, with rings and with working with hardware that had a, a bracket that would project far enough out so that it would clear the crown of the door. So that's another thing too, when you're working with doors, sometimes you will have that funky crown that comes out and it projects out. Sometimes it's seven inches and then we have to find the appropriate bracket. So these are just some things to kind of keep in mind when you're working with a door, look up and pay attention. Like where is the crown coming out of the door and do I have the hardware that's gonna clear it? And Kim, um, talk to me about the fact that she wanted these on rings and not traverse, and these look pretty high. Yeah. And in my experience, when you have rings and the and the panels need to function and go back and forth traverse, um, the rings get stuck sometimes. So was that one a, a challenge here, and how did you overcome so it? So there is um, a tape that we have found that you can put at the top of the rod so you're not going to see it. And mm -hmm. that tape, it's kind of helps glide it so that this way they can... Um, they're able to move it. Yeah, it's like when you go into a dressing room and they have a grommet drape and you're like moving it yeah, it's like, so yeah. high up in the air. And you're like, this is going to rip in a couple of months. So yeah, there, there's ways to get around that. That um, Some uh, drapery uh, hardware companies offer the tape and then it also has to do with the kind of ring, it has that ring with a liner and whatnot will we'll move a little easier. You know, we've so, even taken yeah. um, a piece of wax and to like polish the top of the hardware for yeah. rings to move smoother. Right, right. Okay, so this is one of our projects. Um, this is actually mm -hmm. the, the same master suite as what I showed you a couple of slides ago. This was done mm -hmm. um, um, on the main, this uh, customer lived on the main line and this was done for designer um, B. Robertson Interiors a couple of years ago. And in the master bedroom, we had these two corner French doors. And mm. uh, same situation, we didn't want to put anything on the door. And however, we needed to get privacy and we needed to get light control and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, these are functional draperies and um, they stack on each side of the door and they just effortless, effortlessly <laughs> move <laughs> to, to the center. And uh, if memory serves me right, that center, pan the corner panel, um, mm -hmm. e either way, it could be made at 
as two panels or it could be made as one panel mm -hmm. and uh, it just moves in two different directions. So if you're specifying the drapery panels for your workroom, know that you, you can do it either way, either one or two, just make sure to specify it correctly. If it is two panels though, just make sure that the, the returns in the corner, that they're so close together that there's really isn't a gap there if you don't want to see a gap. And uh, here I'll show you what it looks like when it's closed. Very nice. So just just, just a lovely, and uh, clearly a blackout situation wasn't an issue here be, because you right. can see the light bleeding through, but it was really mostly for privacy and, and, and some light control. So can we go back real quick to that other oh, yeah. slide? Because I, I just have one, I have a question. So with these doors, did they open out or did they open in? You know, that's a good question. Um, Either way, I actually, I'm pretty sure they opened in. And even mm -hmm. with your other example, with the terrace mm -hmm. and, and the high windows, I noticed that your panels cleared the doors enough. Mm -hmm. So even if they opened in, they would have right. they would have cleared it just fine. Because that's another, that's another thing, too, to keep in mind. And if you're putting um, drapes by a French door or if you're even putting blinds on a French door or any kind of door, you want to make sure – I always hold up my tape measure – to the back of the door and open the door and see what kind of if, if it's going to clear the head rail because that's another I've gotten burned on that before where I've put something on a door and the customer goes to open it and the door no longer functions and that <laughs> that oh, yeah, was not a, burned on that yeah. too <laughs> yeah so so just a little thing to keep in mind always double check um, with French doors which way the doors are opening so you know uh, how to treat it and what adjustments you need to make. And mm -hmm. in the case of panels, you need to be able to clear them enough for the, right. for, for the, um, the doors, doors to open. open. Okay. So this was a sliding glass door situation where we had uh, cornices that were, um, the door was at a different height, was a lot lower than the window to the right. So this was done for Susie Chusid uh, designs. And, um, she, for, for Susie, it was important that the cornices lined up at the top, but if we made it at the same depth as the one um, on the window, you would have seen the top of the door. So the, the, what's great about this is it's an example of being able to use um, the same window treatment, but just at a different, at a different size. And um, we, Susie likes it when the panels frame out the door. So we had to bring it out far enough and we had the space here to clear it where you could have them as a pair and you can still go in and out of that sliding glass door. Now, a couple of weeks ago um, on the designer highlight, uh, we showed you a picture of uh, Keisha Franklin from uh, Held in Interiors, what we did for a sliding glass door. So if it's a situation where you wanna be able to have a pair, and you know, for the pretty, but for the function, if you don't have the wall space, like in Keisha's uh, situation, we didn't have the wall space. So we made it so that the panel that covered the door that functioned, it was a two-way panel. So you could have it where it just stacks on either side framing the door. And when you needed to the functionality of going in and out of the door, the panel stacked over to the other side and it almost looked like it was one solid panel. So there's different ways that you can definitely treat it. Um, and get around a sliding glass door. And I love how this situation shows that you can have two seemingly the same treatments side by side, mm -hmm. but in different sizes. And it shows right. you that that's right, right to that have. Another so they're on the same plane, but there are two different windows and they deserve two different treatments. Yes. Yeah, so, and that was like, we, I, we had to make that decision mm -hmm. whether or not it was, I said, it's either they line up at the bottom, but they couldn't because then the, the cornice over the window just would have been too massive. And what you don't know it, with these, uh, with this situation and this install is there was this window here directly to the right of the door, but then there was another five windows in the space. So oh. having massive cornices in a, you know, kitchen family room, open area, it just would have been too big. And it would have been too overpowering. Yeah. So that's why it's okay. It's okay to, you know, show the different sizes and heights there. Nice. Okay, so, really? so this was um, this was a, in, interesting. Um, this is actually the same house um, in Jenkintown that we did mm -hmm. for the Gasic Design Group that I showed you earlier. But this was an upstairs bathroom, French doors. We didn't want mm -hmm. this was not the case where we can put um, stationary drapery panels or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> and um, and they didn't want to 
who actually have the Roman shades and have them stack at the top in order to get some light. Mm -hmm. So what we opted out for were a updated version of a rod to rod treatment. Okay. And uh, you guys are probably mm -hmm. familiar with rod to rod treatments because what, it, what usually goes on French doors over the glass and mm -hmm. it has the rod at the top and the rod at the bottom and there's a shear that's stretched between the two rods and it's usually like gathered and shirred and there's a little ruffle at the top <laughs> so this is what we did maybe 10 years yeah. ago <laughs> not so much in style right now yep. but i wanted to show you the updated version of a, a the, the same treatment it's still a rod to rod it's still over a french mm -hmm. door on the glass but instead of the all the shirring and the rouging what we did is mm -hmm. these are inverted pleated with the pocket oh, behind cool. the, um, the, the the pleats. Yeah, and then the ride just goes through it. You don't see it. So uh, we have four oh. pleats, well, da, 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 three pleats with, with, with four different sections yeah. there. And it's um, it looks a lot a lot more streamlined and a mm -hmm. lot more kind of contemporary and modern and um, still serves the same function. Okay, so this was a project that we did for uh, Jonathan Harris um, for his client. Uh, and these uh, are operable shutters. They are shutters that can stack, that are stacking to one side. And um, the client had plantation shutters throughout the entire townhouse. And when it came to the sliding glass doors, uh, she was very adamant about having the same look um, of the shutters on the doors and we said yeah we can we can definitely do that so this picture here what you're seeing is um in the kitchen and so this door off the top of my head i want to say it was about 12 feet wide so it required three wow. panels and the panels um are able to stack one uh one behind another now with shutters you're also able to have them to buy folds but this client wanted them to stack so it's very interesting um it is a heavier look, but it it, it's, mm -hmm. it went with the aesthetic of the space, and it was exactly what she wanted. Um, in the next picture, I'm gonna we'll talk about the, the challenges that we faced with uh, with this. So, as you can see, you have we have a smaller sliding glass door here, but then we also had windows to the left of the door. So, because of the height of the windows and the door, it required us to have a, a divider rail. So it's that like solid bar that's in the middle. And with that solid bar, one of the things that I noticed very quickly was, okay, we have to have the divider rail on the door match the divider rail on the window. So when the panels of the shutters go to the, uh, you know, the left corner there, those shutters almost meet. So it had to look wow. seamless across. So it was a lot of math. That's so where like we're, match, Kim. Yeah, so where we're very fortunate is that we have um, the expertise of Bill are the <laughs> interior installer. installer. So um, I measured this, but when it came time for production and everything else, I kind of needed to call in, you know, the big, the the big, big gun. guns to, to <laughs> figure it out. And that was one of the things that it was like, okay, the shutter, where does it hit? And it, it had it line up with the mullion of the window. So with, what was great was we had the flexibility of where to put that center divider rail on the door, but it was very important for it to line up with the window because the door was a double hung window. So that was really dictating where that was going. So it was like, okay, from the bottom of here, where does that land? And the louvers matching it. Yeah, that was another oh important factor of all this, having making sure that the louvers matched up and it didn't look you know, mismatch. Cause even the client was like, this is going to drive my husband crazy. He likes things very lined up. So it was, it took oh a lot, but, there, but we were able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those, you're keeping your fingers crossed and holding your breath until it gets installed. But, um, yeah. Yeah. But it, th these are key things that it, it can be done. Like there are sometimes there are roadblocks, but there are ways to kind of, to figure out a way on how to do it. And so, okay, I have a couple of clarifying questions sure. that I think our listeners would be interested in. Um, so, like you said, it is a heavier look, so we need to be mm -hmm. prepared for that and to have the right uh, the right space to fit right. that aesthetic. And uh, how deep was that frame that you had to build? You have to build the, the frame around the entire <laughs> um, door. How deep was it? So, for this, uh, for the family room here, it came out with the two panels, I want to say about six inches. 
So with the kitchen, it came out about nine inches. So you have to think about it. it's wow. three doors in right. the kitchen. Those three panels that that slid through. Yep. So um, we opted to have, I don't know if it's hard to tell. Well, no, you can probably see it in this picture. But we had that side piece put in so that this way you wouldn't see like the, the profile of the, of the doors. Right. And then we also had the valance made over the top. And that, all that was done with Hunter Douglas. It wasn't something that we had to add extra. It was something that we could order with with that. So and that's right. another thing too, is that you need the space. We You have to have the, the flexibility and the space to be able to go out. Yeah. And then my other question is, as mm -hmm. the panels stack, um, mm -hmm. it looks like here you stack them on the door, not off the door on the wall, correct? Mm -hmm. Right, right. We stacked them on the door um, because if you wanted to stack them on the wall, that, that that would go for this one, it would go into another panel. So you'd have a third panel. And at that point, mm -hmm. that panel would always be closed. And from from a budget standpoint, and then it's, it just, it wouldn't be worth it right. to have, I mean, you, we could do it. Most certainly we have the space to do it here. But like in the kitchen, in the previous slide, we'd have to go to a fourth panel. Right, right, right. So just and, something for us to keep in mind. This is where yeah. we kind of have to balance things out. Mm -hmm. But for the customer, for that customer who says, I want all the light that I can get, <laughs> this is not the option to do it. No, no. And these are, and these are the conversations. The exactly. Class. Exactly. These are the conversations that, that you have to have. It, it's, you know, it's okay to have that uncomfortable conversation beforehand. And you want to have those to. conversations. You have to point out all the different things. You have to say, look, if you want to go with this look, you're going to lose the entire door. But on the flip side, when they are shut and they're open, it's very pretty. So right. you still get that view when the panels are closed. And that's the other thing, too. You can't have the louvers open when the doors are stacked. They have to be closed. Oh, man. There's so many considerations with the shutters. I know. It's, it's yeah, really there's, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot of little nuances and little nudgy things. Um, I mean, shutters, that's a whole other beast. We can, we'll is, do a whole is. other episode on shutters. That's <laughs> that we'll do. Yeah. You guys did a great job here. Thank Nicely you. done. Okay, yeah, and so we wanted to leave you uh, with the shutters as like our big hooray image because it's such mm -hmm. a handsome product and such a handsome, yeah. tough installation. But what we want to leave you with or what we wanted to communicate there that it is possible. And if you have a customer yeah. who has that look and has that aesthetic, um, your window treatment specialist or if you are in our areas we can help you achieve that absolutely and so um as always we want to leave you with a couple of free goodies and mm -hmm. here is mine if you go on my website which is vitaliainc.com you are able to download a a free uh, report a free um gift if you will it's called a uh, 37 and a half uh window treatment ideas to use immediately um steal swipe and make your own in your next design project and essentially it's a whole deck of various ideas and uh, close-ups curated by yours truly so that uh, you can be inspired um, on your next project great and then we also have um, architectural digest you know 10 things to know about custom window treatments um, you can get that free ebook. Luann wrote it a couple years ago. It is on our website. We also have, um, I forgot to mention this all these the last couple weeks. We also have a blog. Um, and on the blog, we have a lot of different um, tips and tricks on like transom windows. Luann did a really great blog on transom windows a couple years ago. We will also be speaking about transom windows. But if you ever have any questions or things and you kind of want immediate information, you can always check out our blog. It's a tab on our website. And they have we have everything from window treatments and awnings on there as well. Nice. And as always, be sure if you want to keep up with Luann, you want to follow the podcast. Uh, uh, the Instagram is at Luann Nigara. And the same thing for the website, um, LuannNigara.com. And if you want to listen to the audio version of um, WTF, uh, you guys had an episode uh, two weeks ago. So yeah, you want to head over and listen to that because uh, there's a lot of great, great information there as well. And actually, as a matter of fact, I can peel back the curtain a little bit because <laughs> to the, just this morning, Luann and I did another episode of the WTF, the podcast ah. version, and we are talking about pricing. 
So mm. wait till that comes out because pricing can be such a sensitive issue, but also at the same time, we all need to be so knowledgeable on it. And uh, we're really giving you the guidance on um, how much mm -hmm. you can charge for the window treatments and how much they should cost and what kind of value that you're providing to your um, favorite exactly. customer by, by um, supporting them with their window treatment projects. All, all right, and if you want to connect with us uh, on either Instagram, uh, we're at WindowWorks or on Facebook, WindowWorks as well, uh, we would love to hear from you. <laughs> And also, please connect with me as well. Um, we are, it's, it, you can either connect with me by phone or by email. If you are a Philadelphia area designer who wants support on your next window treatment project, um, I would love to be that support for you. We have a wonderful team of a window treatment specialist, a um, back-end general manager, and uh, an amazing installer, an amazing mm -hmm. seamstress, and uh, all together we are here to support you on your window treatment projects. And also, if you are anywhere in the country, please connect with me on Instagram. I am at Vitalia underscore Inc. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this episode on how to treat your doors. Again, if you have any questions or anything or something, you think of something over the weekend, do not hesitate to reach out. Definitely. Thank you so much for joining us. We know you've your, your time is very valuable, and we really appreciate your spending your time with us, either live or in recording. But always reach out to us if you have any questions yes. whatsoever. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Friday at 12. <laughs> Bye, because everyone. It's Friday. It's WTF. Exactly. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>